autonomous cars are coming, that they're rolling out in stages. The next stage for Nissan will be the arrival of the next generation Nissan Leaf electric car, which is expected to drop on September 6. Leading up to the reveal, however, Nissan is teasing the world with a trickle of information on some of the features their groundbreaking EV will have, including a semi-autonomous driving feature for highway travel that starts, stops and steers the car called ProPilot Assist. But the newest news is that the Leaf will feature something called Nissan Pro Pilot Park, which will allow the car to park itself, with you still in it, unlike the latest BMWs, in a parallel, perpendicular or even angled space. Unlike the systems that just detect and steer, the Nissan version operates all the pedals and shifter as well, making it a truly autonomous experience. Just push a button, trundle down the street, and if the car detects a usable spot, hold the button down and it does the rest, according to the company. Nissan released a video explaining how the system works but sadly added that it won't be appearing immediately on US bound Leafs. Leafs? Until after the 2018 model year, first making its appearance in Europe and Japan. Over time, Nissan plans to add additional features to the ProPilot system as those systems are tested and finalized. RACQ spokesperson Lauren Ritchie said more than 450 classic, collectible and prestige cars would be on show. There will be an impressive display of more than 40 Holdens at this year's event as we celebrate the much-admired brand in Australia, Ms Ritchie said. We'll also have a range of classic vintage and custom motorcycles on display as well as a number of electric vehicles and bikes. Ms. Ritchie said this year's event was not only reserved for car lovers. It's going to be a family day with lots of entertainment for the kids, and adults, alike, she said. This year children will be spoiled for choice with rides, roving entertainers, face painting, a carousel, inflatable obstacle course and a petting zoo. The big kids will love the rock climbing wall, V8 simulator, and speed racer. At $2 per person to enter, it's a cheap day out for families and kids under 3 can come along for free. Proceeds from the event would go towards RACQ's Rescue Helicopter Network and Heart of Australia. RACQ Motor Fest begins 10 a.m. at Eagle Farm Racecourse on Sunday 9th July. Ottawa's Kinexus has added a major automaker to its client portfolio in a deal that executives are framing as a long-term partnership. The Kanata-based firm, which sells supply chain management software, announced last week that Nissan Motors will use its flagship rapid response product to track production and sales analytics across its operations. Koichiro Sakakibara, a representative of Nissan's manufacturing division, said in a statement that this was the beginning of a long-term partnership between the two firms, highlighting the flexibility and scalability of rapid response in managing Nissan's global supply chain. Kinexus continues to solidify its unique value proposition as a single solution to the supply chain challenges faced by today's manufacturer, added Kinexus CEO John Sickard. Nissan joins automaker Volvo as a Kinexus client, as well as defense manufacturer Lockheed Martin, and large firms including Nikon, Cisco and GoPro. Shares of Kinexus Incorporated TSX, KXS, have yet to recover from a rough June, which saw the company's stock price drop as low as $79, a 12% drop from the beginning of the month. As of midday trading, Kinexus shares were priced at $78.12. Subaru will be bringing its all-new Subaru Impreza in European specification to the Frankfurt Motor Show this September. On sale since May this year in Japan and the US, the standard Impreza has never generated much interest in the UK, but Subaru are hoping to change that with the all-new hatchback. Based on a new modular platform destined to underpin the entire future Subaru range, the new Impreza is lower, longer and wider than the outgoing car. Subaru claimed that the all-new platform dramatically lifts refinement while further improving overall handling and response. Like all Subarus, 
the new Impreza will be available exclusively with all-wheel drive. As far as engines are concerned, Subaru has only confirmed one engine choice so far, a 152 bhp naturally aspirated 2-liter flat-four petrol engine. This bucks the class trend of radical downsizing and will be connected to either a 6-speed manual or lean Artronic CVT gearbox. Sport trim models will also benefit from a torque vectoring system, with the intention of improving agility and overall handling. The Impreza also features an all-new interior, dramatically improving on the plastic e-cabin of the current car, supplemented with an all-new infotainment system. Subaru has continued its commitment to safety in the new car, with 40% increase in crash energy absorption, eyesight collision avoidance technology, which uses a camera to monitor the road ahead, also allowing for adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning and several other functions. Interestingly, Subaru also says its latest platform will support autonomous driving technology in future. Other tech features include steering responsive headlights, which angle the beam and corners for a better view, and reverse automatic braking to stop you clattering into objects when reversing. With a future WRX STI to be based off the same platform, even if the new Impreza fails to grasp the attention of golf and focus buyers at a mainstream level, it might give us a clue into its future capabilities. Either way, the Impreza represents a major leap forward for the quirky Japanese manufacturer. In the world of cars, it's unorthodox, almost unacceptable, for a vehicle to stick around, for nearly a decade, without any significant updates. Sure, a couple of facelifts and some neat new features parsed out over the years keep things fresh and interesting, but it's also a wonderfully effective way to make a car feel real old, real tired, real quick. Naturally, there are exceptions to the rule. With this the Nissan 370Z. It's been about 9 years since the 370Z first landed as a new car for the 2009 model year, hardly a drop in the bucket considering the rich lineage, but an eternity by all other accounts. Whichever rivals the Z has left, they've become either lighter or heavier, cheaper or more expensive. Turbocharged. Direct injected. More technologically advanced friendlier to drive. The Z has stayed the course and it's graying at the temples. It's forehead more wrinkled and hands more weathered than you remember. But slipping into the part leather, part Alcantara cabin of the full Zoot 370Z Mismo, suddenly none of that matters.
scoffing at the idea of turbochargers and direct injection, the badge on the back directly correlates to the engine size. Power comes from a normally aspirated, 3.7-liter V6 engine. Base and mid-range models pump out a respectable 332 horsepower and 270 pounds FT of torque, while in Nismo flavor, that's cranked up to 350 horsepower and 276 pounds FT. Nissan and Infiniti faithful know this engine well. Part of the VQ family, it wakes up with a mischievous purr at the poke of the starter button. Peg the throttle and, while not as silky as some other six-cylinder coupes out there, the BMW M240i comes to mind, the Z awakens with a guttural howl past 4,000 RPMs. Suffice it to say, the Z is still equal parts bark and bite, even if that bite isn't as strong as it used to be. Still, driving a Z is refreshing. It's not for everyone, but there's a pleasant weight and mechanical feel to the Z that you'd be hard-pressed find anywhere else these days. The steering is heavy and communicative, and because it's a hydraulic setup, there aren't any buttons to adjust how much effort it takes to turn the wheel. The shifter, though not as buttery smooth as a Mazda MX-5 Miata, is pleasantly notchy and easily manipulated. The clutch lets you know exactly when it bites and pushes back on your foot just enough, but not to the point where you regret skipping leg day. Fully disabling the stability and traction control safety nets is a one-button process. It does take a bit of a deep stab at the throttle to nail a perfect rev match downshift, but the throttle is still properly responsive and it's easy to drive this car smooth. Or in anger. The exhaust note is nothing short of intoxicating, and what you hear isn't electronically manipulated or amplified by any speakers whatsoever. Of course, the soundtrack is just part of what the Nismo trimmings offer. It's a fairly complete package, you get a few mechanical bits, including the aforementioned power bump and exhaust system, plus beefed up brakes speaking through a set of lovely 19-inch split 5-spoke alloy wheels and Dunlop summer rubber and a laundry list of chassis tweaks, including upgraded springs and dampers, and more bracing. They add up to a bit of a harsh and noisy ride, but come on! When you're driving a sports car, compromise is often the name of the game. Contrary to our friends south of the border, where you could opt for a Zenismo with a 7-speed automatic transmission, Canadian spec cars are available exclusively with a 6-speed manual with RAV matching. Do yourself a favor and leave the Tuiki off, though. You also get a few showy bits, including a body kit, not as shouty as you'd think, and the ducktail style spoiler is reminiscent of a Porsche 911 Carrera RS 2.7, and a few neat touches inside, like a red stripe atop the steering wheel and a pair of lovely, but manually adjustable and non-heated, Recaro seats, among others. It's a fairly cohesive package, striking a solid balance between meaningful performance upgrades and properly aggressive looks. Drawbacks? Well, there are a few. Sit down, this might take a while. The Z Mismo shows much of its age inside. It cocoons you rather well, as a sports car should, but the infotainment system is stated and not as intuitive as others out there. You've got Bluetooth, USB connectivity, GPS navigation and radio, and, er, that's about it. No Apple CarPlay or Android Auto here. On the flip side, the physical buttons to adjust the infotainment, radio and HVAC systems are an absolute breeze to use. Storage space isn't exactly sparse, but the Z isn't commodious either. The rear lift gate exposes 6.9 cubic feet of storage space, about the same as a Subaru BRZ with its rear seats folded up, and there are a couple of shelves and pockets behind the seats. Speaking of the seats, you'll have a tough time squeezing your hand between the nook of the door and the seat to adjust it. It can be an exercise in frustration, so it's best to make any adjustments with an open door. Active safety features aren't exactly a priority for the Z either. The standard backup camera is useful considering the view out the rear is all but useless, yet that's about it. No reverse sensors. 
No blind spot monitors. No automatic braking. No adaptive cruise control. Number 360 degree camera, unlike other Nissans. You'll find more standard kit on a loaded cash car. It's either a blessing or a curse, depending on how you look at it. And then there's the price. The Z Mismo costs just over $48,000, and it comes one way, fully loaded. At this point, $48K buys you a lot in the six-cylinder, two-door, rear-drive, sporty car realm, the 3.6 LV6 powered Chevrolet Camaro 1LE would like to have a word with you, or even a base BMW M240i. It's also worth noting $48K gets you into a Ford Mustang GT, equipped with the performance package and a 435 horsepower V8. Few of those competitors, however, offer a driving experience as direct as the Z. Sure, most competitors feature gizmos and gadgets that can tailor the driving experience to make it more engaging, but it's just not the same and that's exactly what's so endearing about this car. As a cohesive whole, the Z is a breath of fresh air, an age trap warrior that's refreshingly simple, rewarding, mechanical, and one that can still fight. Admittedly, the Nismo kit is certainly tantalizing on its own, but the price tag is a serious detractor. Instead, you'll want the base Z starting at $29,998, the car is a blank canvas, waiting to be transformed to suit exactly what the driver wants. Fewer and fewer cars today deliver on that promise, and when the 370Z is we know it is gone, whether it evolves into some sort of turbocharged coupe, adapts a hybrid powertrain, or heaven forbid, disappears from Nissan's lineup altogether, it will be sorely missed.